Morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Greg Slack, the Media Relations Officer for the Hamilton Police Service. The purpose of today's briefing is to bring forward current developments and updates in the missing person case of Timothy Bosma. There will be words from the investigative command staff, starting with Superintendent Dan Kinsella of Investigative Services Division, as well followed by Lead Detective, Detective Sergeant Matt Cavanaugh. Following their statements, there will be a brief question and answer period monitored by myself. So to begin today, I call upon Superintendent Dan Kinsella. Good morning, and thank you to the media for your coverage, and thank you to the public for your assistance in the missing person investigation of Tim Bosma. As you are aware, Homicide Investigator Detective Sergeant Matt Cavanaugh leads our investigative team. The Hamilton Police Service was notified of Tim Bosma's disappearance by his wife Charlene on May the 6th. Division 3 detectives immediately began an investigation. Due to the unusual nature of the disappearance, the homicide unit took over the investigation. Over 150 officers from this service have been committed to ground search, air search, and investigation. This investigation in this investigation, we have utilized ground search and rescue, divisional patrol, mounted and canine units, action officers, and we have assigned detectives from across the service to the homicide investigative team. We have also been assisted by the OPP. We will continue to commit any and all resources required by the investigative team. Detective Sergeant Matt Cavanaugh will now provide you with an update. This investigation This investigation has had some developments. Our police service is requesting the assistance of the public in this matter. First, late yesterday afternoon, Mr. Bosma's cell phone was recovered in an industrial area of West Brantford. Last night, police conducted a ground search of this area. It was a very large area. However, nothing further of Mr. Bosma's was found. Second, Police received information that Mr. Bosma's vehicle was seen at approximately 10.10 p.m. in the downtown area of the City of Brantford on Monday, May 6th. Police do not know the route that Mr. Bosma's truck went through the City of Brantford. As video evidence is an important investigative tool in any investigation, Police are requesting the following from the businesses of the City of Brantford. Police are asking that individuals and businesses in the City of Brantford who have video surveillance check that surveillance footage for Monday, May 6th, between the hours of 9.30 p.m. and 10.30 p.m. for any type of activity. This is an important piece of the investigation. This would have been a time when most of those businesses were closed. Yesterday, investigators working on this case received the results of a production order for the cellular telephone of the man that, con that contacted Mr. Bosma. From the cellular records and interviews, police have found that these two same individuals that attended Mr. Bosma's house test drove a similar type of vehicle in the City of Toronto on May 5th in the middle of the day. The owner of this vehicle was not harmed. The owner was able to provide a description of the two males. This description of the two males matched the description provided by Mrs. Bosma. As well, the vehicle owner from Toronto was able to add a description of the first male. And I'll describe this first male. Male white, 6'1 to 6'2, 170 to 180 pounds, in his mid 20s, light to medium short brown hair, unshaven, wearing blue jeans, long sleeve orange shirt, and running shoes. The gentleman in Toronto described it as a short sleeve shirt when he saw him. The gentleman from Toronto described and added to this description 
on one of his wrists, he wasn't sure if it was a left or right, where a person wears a watch was the word ambition. There was a box tattooed framing the outside of the word ambition. And it would have been in the same direction as one wears a watch. Police have researched this tattoo. This tattoo itself is not uncommon. Many people have the word ambition tattooed on their body. However, the location and the frame around it is unique. This male has not been identified as yet. There is no further description of the second male. Due to the overwhelming response from the public, thanks to the media, police have had to set up a tip line to answer all the tips. Police are asking now that anyone with information regarding Mr. Bosna's location or the identity of either one of these males to contact the tip line at 905-546-2100. Five four six twenty one hundred, or to call Crime Stoppers. Thank you. Okay, we'll start the question and answer period. Um, if it has any relation to the investigation, Detective Sergeant Matt Cavanaugh will be glad to answer those questions. It's a matter of resources and staffing. Superintendent Dan can settle into those questions. Detective Sergeant, do you think that Timothy Bosna is still alive? We always have to hold out hope. That's all I can say. Have you been able to to get the IP addresses of people who accessed those online ads that he had posted and narrow it down to Monday, perhaps? I'm not sure if you were here for the earlier briefings. Uh, Mr. Bosma posted his cellular telephone on the advertisement. Therefore, no one has to go into the computer, into that ad, to answer the ad. They can take the telephone number off and simply call it. Oh, from like the home page? Or That's correct. Home? Okay. Was the truck in Toronto, uh, was it stolen in the end, or did the uh, person in Toronto still have that truck? The person still has that truck. And again, it was a Dodge Ram 3500 diesel. Is there any indication that Mr. Bosch has passed, like, has something to do, any, any kind of indication that, about somebody that he might have known or anything like that? At this point in the investigation, there's nothing in Mr. Bosma's past or Mrs. Bosma's past would indicate anything uh, relevant to this investigation. Can you tell us a little bit more about the Toronto test drive? Was it the same scenario where they, they met this person uh, at his or her home, took the car for a test drive and then brought it back, or what happened? It, it was almost an identical scenario in the fact that two individuals walked up to this male's business not having a vehicle. The test drive was the same. One, the taller individual in the driver's seat, potential victim in the passenger seat, and one male behind him. And they returned him to his business? Yes. Was did he find them person? suspicious in any way? One at a time, please. Sorry. Uh, did, did he find them suspicious in any way? Did anything trigger with him that day that was unusual? Yes, he did. That's all I'm going to say. Yes, he found them suspicious. Was there a side over. Hang on a second, Mr. Gardner, you were here first. Yeah, no, um, did he contact you or did somebody else find him and get a hold of how did, how did you find this? Did you track him down yourself? The man in Toronto, sorry. I've already talked about this in the media release from the uh, work of the investigators. Yesterday we received uh, production orders, so that's the same as a, a warrant. Okay. And we, on that cellular phone number, that contacted Mr. Bosman. Okay. And that's how that individual was found. found him. They called him as well. Yes. Matt, was there a third person involved in, in Toronto? Um, how did the two men arrive at the Toronto location? Did they drive themselves there or did somebody drop them off? And what can you say about what happened at the Bosma residence? As I say in the, the Toronto scenario, uh, the complainant or the, uh, the, the witness in this case saw two individuals walk up to his business. Uh, he asked how they arrived. And uh, they said they walked there. In the Bosma case, there was no other vehicle saw at the Bosma house, and we can only presume there was a vehicle in the area. The cell phone number didn't give you any, uh, or records didn't give you any other information about one of the suspects? Um, I'm not sure what you mean, sir. Sorry, so the, the production order, um, wait, how you track the, the number that called, has it, but there's, there's no other information available about who the suspect is or, or where he might have come from? 
No, this uh, phone uh, it was only on for three months, so activated for three months. Uh, the cellular location, uh, it, we also have cell tower locations on that phone. Many of the calls originated from Etobicoke area of Toronto. However, different parts of Etobicoke. So uh, I don't know if that indicates the individual's transient, uh, but different tower locations in the city of Etobicoke. But since Mr. Bosma, this phone has been turned off and has not been used. Who from owns the that contract for the phone? Hang on, from the back, do you have a question? If, uh, if you're still waiting for video from Brantford, will there be a search moved to the Brantford area at this point? Brantford Police is assisting. Uh, they know the city better than our service. Uh, they're helping us quite a bit, and uh, they're organizing a search now of different areas of different industrial sites. From the back, from the center? Who owns the contract for the phone? I'm not sure what you mean by that. There's, you have to sign a contract or get some, like, is it a stolen phone? Is it a, there's got to be someone that's connected. Again, I, I'm sure you missed the first two media briefings. Uh, this phone, a bogus name was used in this phone, and that's not unusual in any type of activity. Right there. Are you guys looking at the same truck that's being for sale all the time? Are you looking at other people that are selling Dodge Rams? And why that particular car? I mean, if it's malicious, then why aren't they looking for other cars, like approaching people who are selling <coughs> Hondas or something else? Well, first of all, the, uh, the information we get as a police service, a lot of it came from this production order. And uh, the phone numbers gained from that production order showed us who this individual has contacted. And those are the people we have been contacting. Scott. And uh, secondly, are they targeting that type of vehicle? Yeah, are you guys looking at anybody after selling that vehicle? Are you calling them and asking them if anyone's coming to approach them for that car? It's part of the investigation, sir. Yes. Can you tell us, were there any phone calls made on Tim Bosma's cell that you found after he disappeared? And whereabouts, can you narrow down what area in Toronto that this other man was was with the suspects? Okay, you've, got, you've asked a couple questions here. First, Mr. Bosma's cell phone. Uh, as already indicated, uh, Mr. Bosma's cell phone was turned off shortly after 10 o'clock and never activated again. Uh, as far as the individual in Toronto that complained, he was near the Etobicoke area. Matt, uh, the contact from the uh, Toronto uh, individual, did he have any cell phone contact with these men and uh, were you pursuing that? And what was it that he found suspicious about this uh, The gentleman from Toronto advertised his vehicle in the same way Mr. Bosma did, by internet. Uh, it was the same type of vehicle, it was a newer vehicle. What he found suspicious is what I've already talked about, and the fact that two individuals walk up to an industrial area, which is a ways from uh, residential areas, they walk up without a vehicle, and uh, their interest in the vehicle. He thought was odd because of the size of the vehicle, it's more of a business vehicle than a personal vehicle. So do you have a computer track now on, did these guys answer his ad by computer? Did they have any contact with him before they walked up? Well, the production order showed that they answered by cell phone. And they were pursuing that idea? That's what the production order is. But they, they, had, they had called him and said, we're, we're going to come by and look at the truck. But then it was just suspicious that they had walked up. They walked up and, uh, yes. And, and and did he do anything to act on his suspicions when, once he was suspicious? Did he did he cut the test drive short? Did he tell them, bring me back to my business? Did he pick up his phone and call somebody or, you know, so that they would, you know, maybe rethink what they were planning on doing? No, he didn't. I, I think fortunately for this person, he's a very large individual, and uh, I think that uh, he would overpower the both of them, and I think that was his advantage. So again, it was Mr. Bosna's cell phone that was found in this industrial area? That is correct. And can you give us the description of the two individuals again, or at least the, the one individual with the tattoo? Uh, it's in the media release that you've... Uh... Sorry, the top of the press conference was cut off for our viewers. It's CP24. Okay. The uh, male uh, described, the first male is described as six foot one to six foot two inch, 170 to 180 pounds in his mid 20s, light to medium short brown hair, unshaven, wearing blue jeans, a long sleeve orange shirt, and running shoes. From the second person that we just interviewed, he observed this male with a short sleeve shirt on. He observed several tattoos on his arms that he cannot remember except for one. 
on one of his wrists, either the left or right, where a person wears a wristwatch, was the word ambition. There was a box tattooed framing the outside of the word ambition. Police investigators have researched this tattoo, and the tattoo itself is not uncommon. But the location of the tattoo is very unique. This male has not been identified yet. Based on your conversations with the individual who you tracked down to that cell phone, are you able to narrow down perhaps why Mr. Boswell was taken by these individuals? Was there a, a motive perhaps? We don't have that yet. No. Time for a couple more questions, everybody. So if you want to know further to that, I was going to say, I mean, it, it seems like a strange way to steal a vehicle or not. A way to steal a vehicle if you think there's more to this than just a vehicle back. Well, I think that's why this is uh, creating so much media attention because of the uniqueness of this case. And yes, it is very unusual. And that's uh, all we have right now. Detective Sergeant. Detective Sergeant, what would you say to any, I mean, usually in these cases, there's at least one person out there that knows what happened, who would know who these people are. Perhaps these guys were planning on stealing a car, something went wrong, and, you know, maybe one of them has a conscience. What can you say to them right now to appeal to somebody's conscience to, to put Charlene and, and her family's fears and, and grief at ease? Well, this is a, a case that has upset several communities in Ontario and probably across Canada. And uh, these individuals, they will be identified by the public. They will be identified. And I suggest that people that have knowledge to come forward, either to call Crime Stoppers or call a tip line and identify these individuals. What is the minimum that you're looking for for video? If somebody looks at their video and they're not quite sure what they're looking for, could you describe what they should be looking for in reviewing their video? They should be looking for any type of activity with uh, individuals or a vehicle during those time periods I already said, Monday, May 6th, between 9.30 at night and 10.30 at night. Sorry, what did Tim do for a living? What does he do for a living? Uh, Tim is self-employed. Self-employed in what kind of industry? Uh, it's a construction industry. Okay. Matt, you said that um, there was an eyewitness who saw the truck driving through Brantford on, on Monday. No, I didn't. I said information that the truck was. Uh, what? Okay. Was there a, an eyewitness who actually saw the truck driving through? The information we have, uh, we're working on that right now to uh, provide us to get a statement from that person. And did they note how many people were in the truck? No, they didn't. The suspects arrived in location during the daytime business hours? Middle of the day, I've already said in the report. Oh. I think that's Can you give us any nice. more information on what made that Toronto man suspicious of these two men? Anything they did in particular that... Uh, and I don't, I'm not going to go into that right now. Yeah, I okay. do have a copy Thank of you. the media statements. So Thank you. Thanks a lot.